Welcome into the Ram Truck Workshop here at the Rebuilding Exchange. We're with Sean Boino from Dad's Home Improvement. Sean, you brought us a project today that's too big for our workbench. Today we're going to paint a radiator. It is a do-it-yourself project, but it's not a workbench project. Most of the time when you are painting a radiator, it's going to be in place at your home. Many older homes in Chicago are heated by metal radiators just like this one. These antique pieces are functional, but many are also decorative with fine craftsmanship and historic details. But because they're so old, you need to first check for lead paint. There are test kits to buy at your local hardware store that can tell you if something that you're painting now has been painted with lead paint in the past. I've already done the test on this radiator. We are safe to go ahead with this. If you find out that you are dealing something with lead paint on it, it's no longer a do-it-yourself project. So the first tool that we're gonna use is actually an appliance brush, okay? And these bristles are gonna help us clean in between the slats of the radiator. Sean also whips out a rigid bristle brush, sanding sponges, number two steel wool, a flexible putty knife, and tack cloth, followed by household cleaner, gloves, and paper towels. I quickly realized that the majority of this project involves cleaning. Looks like I'm getting my hands dirty today. And if you're doing this project at home, protect the area around the radiator so that your hands are the only thing you get dirty. And then finally, I brought high heat spray paint. I brought silver, but there's tons of other colors to choose from. So I want you to grab one of the appliance brushes and I'll grab the other one. And we're gonna simply go opening by opening all the way down the line and try and get some of this loose dust and debris. You see dust oh, bunnies yeah. in here and you see pieces of paper and who knows what else. That is a ton of dust in there. As the dust flies, we wise up and grab some respirators. Then, it's time to use the rigid bristle brush. We're gonna focus on the edges and any loose, flaking paint and areas that are hard to reach with this blade area of the brush. We're not even done cleaning, but I can already tell that this old cast iron is coming back to life. What we have been focusing on with the rigid brush so far is some of this detail work. So when we do put a fresh coat of paint on it, it really shines through and brings back some of the craftsmanship that it had when it was brand new. Yeah, I noticed you uncovered a whole pattern over here that, that was you couldn't see that before. That's right. We have to touch every surface that we're going to paint with the sanding sponge. Okay, what we're doing is we're prepping it for the new paint. We want to make sure that it bonds to it properly okay. and cures properly so that it lasts for a long sure. time. You feel buff? After that arm workout? Yeah, yeah. The upper body workout continues as we buff up the entire piece with number two steel wool. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove some of this dust that we created with the sanding sponge and the bristle brush. Tack cloth is basically just a piece of sticky cheesecloth. Get in between the crevices here. So pretty much you're just flossing this right now. We're flossing the radiator. There you go. Good technique here. You like that? Your dentist would be proud. The radiator is looking much cleaner, but we still have one more step before it's painting time. So we're gonna use a, a simple household cleaner, and we're just gonna spray this radiator, and we're just gonna wipe it off with paper towels. So this is a project you could spend pretty much the whole day prepping. This is a really extreme case of fill, but you can spend quite a bit of time, and you wanna make sure you spend the time on the front end so when you get to the painting, it bonds really well. Is it best to have this off while you're doing this? During prep work, it's just more comfortable to work with a cool unit, but while we paint, it's really important to make sure that this radiator is off. Okay. We don't want to paint on a hot surface. Okay, sounds good. It's music to my ears when Sean announces that the cleaning is complete. The gloves go on, and we shake up that can of spray paint. I just want to reiterate that we are using a high heat heat resistant spray paint. We're gonna apply the paint nice and easy. Keep the can at least six inches away from the radiator at all times. To avoid drip marks, we spray on two to three light coats of paint, making sure we cover every nook and cranny. Before the paint even dries, I can already see how that fresh silver color highlights those historic details. The supplies for this project only set us back about 30 bucks. I have to say, it's well worth the tired arms to see this radiator all sparkly and new again. We gave this guy a nice little workout. 